Hello, welcome to World Changes Church Houston. We're glad that you're with us on today. Let's get ready for a dynamic word from the World Dome. So grab everything you need and let's join the World Dome for today's live message. Your name, 
nobody like you, God. God, you're so good. We worship you, Jesus. And we bless your name, oh God. Father, we worship you. We worship you for who you are. And Father, we know no matter what it looks like, no matter what it seems like, Father, we know that you are a good God and we serve a good God. You will do, and your word says, exceedingly abundantly all that we can ask or think. So even though we go through a trying time, Father, you're still good. <laughs> and I said, even though we go through tribulations and trials, Father, we know you're still good. And Father, we serve you no matter what, no matter what it looks like. Say it like this. Lord, you are good. You've been so good. Lord, you are good. You've been better than good. I can pray you enough. See, I owe you my life. Can pray you enough. Even if I try come you've been so good oh, 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 oh you've been, been so good yes you have you've been so good to me Say that this morning. You've been so good. Lord, you've been so good.
I said, you've been so Jesus, nobody compares to you. Just keep worshiping you. Nobody comes to you, Jesus. The righteous Father, we come. We are saved. We're whole and we're complete. You've been so good. You've been so good. So good, amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I, I was lost, thank God, but I'm found. You saved me. You saved me, Lord, and you heal me. I said you heal this body. I said you heal my mind. You heal my family. You heal my finances, Lord. You heal my finances, Lord. And you made a way. You. Say you've been so good to me. Father, we thank you for this, another opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep. Thank you, Lord, that revelation knowledge will flow freely uninterrupted and unhindered by any satanic or demonic force. And Father, I pray that you will speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. None of me and all of you, it's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen and amen. Well, welcome to another Wednesday night Bible study. Um, we have been talking about character. And last week we talked about godly character and we really related it to the fruit of the Spirit. But what we want to talk about today is a lot of times when people talk character, they really mean integrity. Now, let me say that again. A lot of times people, when they talk character, they really mean integrity. So today, we're going to look at integrity versus character and talk about exactly what that is. So if you have your Bibles, Go with me to the book of 1 Kings chapter 9 and verse 4. 1 Kings chapter 9 and verse 4. I, I really want to go slow on this because I, I, I want you to see the difference for quite some time in my life when I was talking about, uh, in a lot of places, I was talking about integrity. I really meant character. And then sometimes when I was talking about character, it, it lined up correctly. But there's, there is a distinction here that needs to be made where this is concerned. So let's start off with some definitions. Let's, let's look at the word integrity first and uh, give you just some first insight on that. Integrity, what it does, it, it adheres to a code of conduct. Integrity adheres to a code of conduct. Uh, integrity, what it does, um, it says, well, here's what I've decided to live by. Uh, and for us as Christians, we've decided to live by the Word. We've decided to live by the principles of God's Word and the principles of God's grace. And so integrity says, you know, I, I'm going to adhere to that. 
I'm going to adhere to that standard. I'm going to adhere to that code. You see this in 1 Kings chapter 9, verse 4. David is really demonstrating this in integrity. He says in verse, uh, chapter 9, verse 4, he says, And if thou wilt walk before me as David thy father walked in integrity of heart and in uprightness, all right, integrity of heart and uprightness, what? To do according to all that I have commanded thee, and will keep my statutes and my, and my judgments. Uh, you see, in verse 4, he demonstrates a man who has made his mind up to walk in integrity. And, and the Bible says that he had integrity of his heart because he was determined to adhere to that code of conduct. He was determined to adhere to that standard and that way of carrying his life. Now, let's look at character, and I want to revisit what we've already talked about because it's so very important. Let's look at character again. Character is, and we've defined it this way, character is doing what's right. Now, I want you to put emphasis on doing. Character is doing what's right. Because without doing, you're never going to find out what character is. Character is what's do, it's doing what's right. Um, it is doing what's right because it's right, all right? Character is doing integrity or doing what's right because it's right, then doing it right. You know, it has been said that a person will never go past his character, that a person will never go past his character. A lot of times people wonder, well, how come I hadn't reached this stage in my career or in my life? I guarantee you it is a character issue because character is sandwiched with habits and destiny. And right in the middle of habits and destiny, you will find character. So, you know, first of all, one of the reasons we're talking about this is that you're going to always be a victim of your character. You're going to always have to, you'll, character is like a ceiling. You can't go past it. You can't go past that, that your, your character. So character is doing what's right because it's right and then doing it right. Character is also what people have come to expect from you. So it's something that flowed out of you and then once it's on the outside, and people can see it, then, you know, your character is now something that has, you know, people have come to expect from you. So a person's character is the sum of his or her disposition, his thoughts, his intentions, his desires, and his actions. Character is shown in how you deal with things. Character is shown with, with how you deal with things. Character looks at what you are doing and how you deal with things. Character is something that you hold fast to inside and that people see uh, in you on the outside. So let's, 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 let's give this definition. Character involves the action of a story. Character is the action of a story. So whatever the story is, character is the action of a story. Now, what I want to do is give a definition that will compare and contrast integrity and character, and I want to, I'm going to give it to the simplest way I possibly can. Here it is. Integrity is recognizing a behavior that is wrong and not joining it. Integrity is recognizing a behavior that is, that is wrong and not join, joining it. And then character is doing something about it. So integrity recognizes something that is wrong, but integrity says, I'm not going to join that which I know is wrong. That's what integrity is. But character is doing something about it. Once you see that something is wrong and you refuse to join it, now do you have enough character to do something about it? Wow. Wow. You, you see what I'm saying? Integrity. Integrity knows that that's wrong. Integrity knows that there's a problem here. Integrity knows that that's wrong, and, 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 and integrity says, I will not join that. But character says, I know what's wrong. I won't join it. But character is all about what are you not going to do about it? What are you not going to do about it? Character is doing something about it. 
Let me give you a few examples. Character is knowing people need food and doing something about it. Character knows that, um, you know, people are hurting and doing something about it. it, it character is, 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 is about doing something about it. it. I'll go this far as to say character is knowing that a friend is being dishonest with, uh, in a situation, and then here's the character, with love and firmness, you confront that person. Enough character to do something about the wrong that you know and the wrong that you won't get involved in. Now, that's, that's confronting. Just to hear the distinction is something that's very confronting. So the difference between integrity and character is action. The difference between integrity and character is action. Character is about the doing, doing what's right. Integrity will de define what's right. Character is doing what's right. And so the difference here between integrity and character is action. Now, let's deal a little bit with in integrity here. In integrity is associated with words like honesty, um, respect. It's associated with words like, you know, generating trust or uh, responsibility. It, one of the main things that I, I, I've always contributed to integrity is keeping promises, keeping promises, uh, helping others, you see. And so what happens is we, we've got to understand the place of integrity and not to get it so confused with the actions of character. Look at this in Proverbs chapter 10 and 9. What does the Bible have to say about integrity? Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 9, he says, He that walketh uprightly, that's integrity. He that walketh uprightly walketh surely. So there's an amazing result that comes with walking in integrity. He says, But he that perverteth his ways, he shall be known. Look at this scripture in Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 6. Proverbs chapter 28 and verse 6. He says, better is the poor that walketh in his uprightness. So it says the guy can be poor, but he has integrity. Then he that is perverse in his ways, in other words, he has no integrity, though he be rich. So he's rich with no integrity. And there's a guy that's poor with integrity. And he says, you would be better off being poor with your integrity than to be rich with no integrity. Now, that leads me to think, well, you know, will my integrity produce things in my life? Will my integrity get the, intention of, uh, the attention of heaven? I, I believe so. I believe so. Let's look at some, some scriptures here, and I'll show you an illustration of that in a moment. Proverbs 11 and 3. Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 3. He says, the integrity of the upright shall guide them. So first of all, I see that when you're walking in integrity, you have a guide. The guy who doesn't have any integrity, uh, he, he, the, the, the guidance that's needed for his life, it, to me, that's one of the most important things you can have as a believer. You, you, want, you want to have integrity that will guide you. Your integrity will guide you. Ultimately, your integrity is going to guide you into good character. Your integrity is going to guide you into the type of actions you perform, the type of character that you display, okay? Now, uh, let's look at Genesis chapter 20. I thought about this story here, and uh, very interesting something here that there was a guy that probably could have died except his integrity got him out of a situation. The story about Abraham in Genesis chapter 20 and verse 1, and Abraham journeyed from thence towards the south country, and he dwelled between Kedesh and Shur, and sojourned in Gerar. And Abraham said to Sarah, said of Sarah, his wife, she is my sister. Now, you know, it, it, it was his half-sister, but, you know, some people think, well, you know, that's a half a truth or a half a lie, but, you know, she is my sister. They were half-sisters and brothers. And then he said, uh, she is my sister, and Abimelech, the king of Gerar, sent and took Sarah. I mean, check it out. 
uh, they asked, well, who is she? He said, it's your sister. Think about that now. No explanation. He says, that's my sister. And he said it with the intent to deceive as well. Let's, let's make sure we understand that. And verse 3 says, But God came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, Behold, thou art but a dead man. Now, now stop right there. I mean, he finally gets to hear the voice of God, and here's what he hears. This night are you a dead man. <laughs> oh, man, come on. I don't know how many of you have ever heard the voice of God, but I can guarantee you, you don't want to hear God's voice come to you and say, This night you are a dead man. Well, let's continue on. He says, For the woman which thou hast taken, she is a man's wife. All right, now check this out, because remember, he said that's his sister. And God says, you know what, this night you're a dead man um, because you're getting ready to mess with this man's wife who I'm in covenant with. But Abimelech had not come near her, and he said, Lord, will thou slay also a righteous nation? Verse 5. Said he not unto me, she is my sister? And she even said herself, said herself, said, he is my brother. Now watch this. He said, in the integrity of my heart and the innocency of my hands have I done this. In other words, he's like, there was no intention at all for me to do this with deception. I did this honestly. I did it with the integrity of my heart. They said they were sister and brother. I had no idea that they were, were married. And God said, watch this, God said unto him in a dream, yea, I know that thou did this in the integrity of thy heart. You know what God was saying? That's why I'm talking to you right now. He said, the integrity of your heart has allowed me to show up right now and stop this thing before you go over a bridge. The integrity of your heart is the reason why I can show up right now and prevent the bad thing from happening to you. That really spoke to me, that there's something about integrity. When you operate in the integrity of your heart, you might be getting ready to, 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 to fall off a, 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 a ledge or something, and God will show up right before that happens because of the integrity of your heart. That just shows me God's willing to show up and stop bad things from happening when you operate in the integrity of your heart. And so God said unto him in, in the dream, yeah, I know that thou did this in the integrity of thy heart, for I also withheld thee from sinning against me. That's awesome. God said your integrity caused me to show up and stop you from sinning against me. Therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. That really, really speaks to me about the power of integrity. It, when, you, when, you're, when you're honest and you're doing things out of the integrity of your heart, God will show up. God will show up and intervene before certain things will happen in your life. And I tell you, that, that, that is a motivation, I pray for you, as it is for me and anybody else, to begin to be people of integrity so that you can, can, can just have this little note in your heart and your mind that my integrity will prevent certain things, certain bad things from happening. My integrity will guide me. My integrity will, will stop certain things from taking place. My integrity will even allow God to show up and to stop me and stop certain things from happening. And, you know, honestly, you know, you may be called to something and in the integrity of your heart, you really honestly thought that's what you were supposed to do in the integrity of your heart. And let me tell you something, in the name of Jesus, you know what happens? You know what's got, got to take place in the integrity of your heart? God shows up and he says, stop, don't go that way. Stop, that's not the way you should go. And in the integrity of your heart, you got this wonderful thing that happens. So that, that's, a, that's a blessing of the Lord to me, praise God. Now, let's, let's dig into the character part of it again. So character is influence by our choices, and character is influenced by our decisions. Character is influenced by our choices and our decisions. Let me show you what Daniel did uh, in Daniel 1 and 8. Daniel had made a decision that he was going to fast from certain things, and, you know, he, he had character to stick with it. Uh, so in Daniel 1 and 8, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with the portion of the king's meat, nor with the wine which he drank. 
Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuch that he might not defile himself. And so, you know, he could have easily just, oh, it ain't number but food, but the character to do what he said he was going to do. The, 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 the character to carry out that integrity and conviction of his heart. That's, that's a powerful thing, and he demonstrated, and that was a choice that he made. It was a decision he made. He, he made a decision to carry himself a certain way and had the character to bring it or to bring it to pass in his life. Look at another illustration, Romans 5, verse 3 through 4 in the New Living Translation. Romans 5, 3 through 4 in the New Living Translation. He says, we can rejoice, too, when we run into problems and trials for we know that they help us develop endurance. And then he says, the endurance develops strength of character. So will God allow certain trials to come into your life to help you to develop in character? Yeah. I believe certain things happen that become opportunities to develop character. And he says, your endurance develops strength of character. And your character strengthens our confidence and our hope of salvation. And so, yeah, I believe there's some things that happen in our life that will strengthen our character. And uh, I, I just believe that once you go through certain things and it strengthens your character, then, you know, you doing something about things is going to be strengthened even more, doing the right thing. You're doing the right thing. Sometimes a trial can help you to do the right thing. Glory to God. That, that is so true. Sometimes hard times motivate you to do the right thing. It strengthens your character, okay? And so, please listen to me. Let, let, me, let me review something. Um, I think this is very important. Let me review the anatomy of, of life. And, and I call it an anatomy of life. Just like you have the anatomy of a physical body, these eight steps really deal with your life. And so the anatomy of life starts with what you expose yourself to. What are you watching? What are you hearing? What are you exposed to? Okay, so whatever you're exposed to is going to determine the way you think. Whatever you're exposed to is going to determine the way you think. And you know, the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Okay? Okay, so now, from this point on, it's going gonna, it's gonna to determine everything else. Your thinking is going to determine your emotions. It's going to determine how you feel, all right? So if you feel depressed, it's probably, you got to go back, in order to fix it, you got to go back to what you've been thinking about. You got to go back to what you've been exposing yourself to, because what you've exposed yourself to determines how you think, and your thinking determines how you feel. Watch this. How you feel determines your decisions that you will make. How you feel determines the decisions you make. Your decisions now will determine the actions you take. Your actions will determine, watch this, the habits you create. See, we create habits, then those habits create us. So those, those habits that you, you, you take, and then watch this, those habits that came from actions, that came from the decisions, that came from how you feel, that came from what you've been thinking about, that came from what you expose yourself to, those habits now create the character. Those habits create your character. You want to know why your character the way it is? Why is your character the way it is? It's because what you've exposed yourself to that caused you to think a certain way, that caused you to feel a certain way, that caused you to make certain decisions, that's caused you to make, take certain actions, that created the habit, and the habit created the character. The habits in our lives create character, and watch this, whatever type of character you have determines the destination. Your destination is determined by your character, and, and, and your character is a makeup of all the things that help to arrive at that place of habits. And so your character is in between all the things that created those habits and your destination. So if you don't like your character, you got to go all the way back to what you've been exposing yourself to that caused you to think that way, that caused you to, to feel that way, that caused you to make the decisions that way, that caused you to act that way, that now created the habits that now create the character. And the character determines your destination. You don't like where you're ending up? 
you don't like your destination in your life, then you have got to go back and examine how you got there. It's not, oh, they don't like me, or oh, you know, nobody likes me, everybody hates me. No, 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 no. It's, it's, a, it's a strong look at your character. How did your character end up the way that it is? And your character will let you and everybody else know your destination. But the good news about it, if you don't like your destination, you can change your character. How can you change your character? It's by changing your habits, changing your actions, changing your decisions, changing how you feel, changing, watch this, changing the way you think, watch this, changing what you're exposing yourself to. I can't tell you how important it is to understand, you know, you, you can't keep exposing yourself to crazy things and not understand that that's going to make up your character. The Bible says uh, when you spend time with, you know, bad people, they can corrupt your manners. You can expose yourself to stuff that'll corrupt, that'll corrupt your character. And, and we don't take that seriously. We just think there's nothing wrong with exposing ourselves with the trash of the world. We don't think there's nothing wrong with exposing ourselves with trashy music, trashy pictures, trashy fellowship, trashy people. We, oh, it ain't gonna mess with me. And, and, and look at your character now. And now you are so limited uh, to being and doing what God's called you to be and do because you don't know that it's a character issue. Wow. I, I pray you got that. Look at this. Character in the believer is a consistent manifestation of Jesus in our lives. Character in the believer is a consistent manifestation of Jesus in our life. The integrity in our hearts becoming integrity in our actions. And that's why that, that is so important. The integrity in my heart becoming integrity in our actions. So, we can develop character several different ways. And I just showed you uh, that anatomy. We can develop character by, you know, um, exposing ourselves to, to, to good things uh, so we can think good things, so we can feel good, so we can make good decisions, so we can do good actions, and then we create good habits, and those habits create a great character, and a great character brings us to a great destination. But let me break it down a little bit more. What else can we do now? We can develop character let, let me give you a few things here, about four of them. Four, so four ways to develop character real quick. Number one, you can develop character by controlling our thoughts, Philippians 4, 8. You can develop character by controlling your thoughts. You know, I just sold you in that progression. Exposing yourself, determining the way you think. Well, notice what he says in verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, do what? Think on these things. You can develop better character by thinking on the right things. But you have to expose yourself to the right things to know what to think on. And that's why this Word of God is so important. Here's the second thing you can do to develop character. By practicing Christian virtues. By practicing Christian virtues. I like 2 Peter 1 verse 5 and 6. Let's look at that in the NLT, 2 Peter 1, verse 5 and 6. By practicing Christian virtues, he says, in view of all this, make every effort to respond to God's promises. Supplement your faith with a generous provision of moral excellence and moral excellence with knowledge and knowledge with self-control and self-control with patient endurance and patient endurance with godliness you know, it's so important that you understand, ladies and gentlemen, that if you just practice these virtues, practice self-control, practice uh, all of the things that it's listed here, you can, you can, it'll help you with your character. Number three, you can develop character by guarding your heart. Proverbs 4.23, you can develop character by guarding your heart. Here's what the Bible says. He says, guard your heart above all else for it determines the course of your life. Guard your heart because it determines the course of your life. What do you have in your heart? Do you have all unforgiveness, hate, lust, uh, mischief? What's in your heart? He says, guard your heart. Well, how do I guard my heart? By guarding the entrances into my heart. Well, what are the entrances into your heart? Your eye gate, your ear gate, and your mouth. 
what goes through your eye gate, what goes through your ear gate, and what comes out of your mouth will eventually end up in your heart and will determine the type of character that you have. It, it's important. We can't live in a crazy world and allow all of the craziness to be the exposure that determines our character. You can't do that. Number, uh, what is this, four? We can develop character by keeping good company. By keeping good company. Look at 1 Corinthians 15, 33. It's important how you choose to spend time with people. Um, 1 Corinthians 15, 33. He says, don't be fooled by those who say such things, for bad company corrupts good character. What kind of company are you keeping? What, seriously, what kind of company are you keeping? That's huge. That's huge because most likely the successes and the failures of your life can be contributed, some of it, to the kind of company you keep. The, t the type of company you keep, you, gotta be, you have to be careful because you you begin to judge what's right and wrong based on the type of company that you keep. What kind of company are you keeping? The Scripture says bad company corrupts good character. So I'm sure the same can be said that if we talk about keeping company with people who have integrity, that's going to be, that's going to enhance our character. Who are you hanging with? Who are you keeping company with? Well, I, I you know, I... They, I know they're crazy and everything, but I ain't got nobody else to spend time with. Listen, dude, you are determining how far you're going to go in life because that bad company determines how far you go. You know, it, it's, it's better to be by yourself than to be corrupted by the bad company that you're keeping. I'm trying to speak the truth in love, I'm trying to show you that you've got to make some adjustments in your life in order to see these things happen. So people of character will set a good example for others to follow and their godly reputation will be evidence to everybody. Let me close with this scripture, Titus chapter 2, verses 7 and 8. In, 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 let's look at it in the NLT. Titus chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. People of character will set a good example for others to follow. If those people you're hanging around with, they're not setting a good example, they're probably not people of character. And, you know, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to infect your character. Look what he says here. Uh, Titus 2, 7, and 8 in the NLT. And you yourself must be an example to them by doing good works of every kind. Let everything you do reflect the integrity and the seriousness of your teaching. Man, that's powerful. Next verse. Teach the truth so that your teaching can be criti uh, uh, criticized. Then those who oppose us will be ashamed and have nothing bad to say about us. He says because, you know, there's something about when you're operating in integrity and operating in character, they're going to look up one day and you're going to be, you know, very successful in a lot of things and they're not and they're going to try to make you a victim of their brokenness or a victim of their bad company or their bad character. Uh, I pray tonight that you really see a distinction between integrity and character, not only the distinction, but see how they work together as well. And I, um, I'm, I'm really motivated to, to really teach things that are going to really help you. So uh, I'll tell you right now, don't miss next Wednesday. I'm going to talk about manipulation. I don't know if I've ever taught on that before, but it's a huge subject that needs to be dealt with. But I thank God for what you heard today. Father, thank you for this opportunity to minister to these, your precious sheep, Thank you, Lord, that revelation knowledge has uh, ministered to people that you know exactly where they are in life. You know, you know. And I thank you, God, just as you did for Abraham, you'll do it for us. In interfere in things that uh, we might be trying, things that we might do to hurt ourselves. Interfere with sin that we're about to walk into. But let us understand the power of integrity and and let us understand the difference between integrity and character is action and, and help us to act according to what we believe, your word. I pray blessings upon the world changes nation, and I pray blessings upon all who are here in this Bible study tonight. And we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 
Now, if you're here and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, the most important thing you can do as a human being is to get saved. The most important thing you can do <laughs> uh, as a person who's saved is to renew your mind. But you can't get to the renewing your mind part until you get to the salvation part. If you're ready to turn your life over to God, if you're ready to make Jesus your Lord and personal Savior, if you're ready to escape the entanglements of this world and find peace in Jesus, repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I realize that I'm a sinner, but right now I repent of all of my sins. I make you my Lord and my Savior. I believe, Jesus, that you died for me and that you delivered me from all of my sins. Lord Jesus, come in my heart. Be my Lord and be my Savior. And I declare that right now in the name of Jesus that I'm saved. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer with me today. If you made that decision on today to make Jesus Lord of your life, first of all, we want to congratulate you. We want you to know that all of heaven is rejoicing with you right now, and so do we. Give us a call if you're in the Houston area at 281-463-0700 or email us at wcchouston at worldchangers.org. We like to spend some time with you, encouraging you and discipling you and helping you understand the decision that you just made. Again, we rejoice with you and we want to welcome you into the kingdom of God. Before we go, if you want to complete your worship today by sowing a financial seed, you can do so by opening up a new text to 74483. And in that text, type WCTXHOU. Put a space in the amount you want to give. Again, that's WCTXHOU, a space in the amount you want to give to the number 74483. Father, we thank and praise you for the seed that is being sown right now. We thank you, Lord, that... As a result of this, people are understanding grace and being empowered to change all around this world. We thank you for a mighty harvest in your kingdom as a result of our obedience to you. We're blessed to be a blessing, and we give cheerfully on today in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, guys, we hope you enjoyed the word that was shared today from the World Dome. Let it take root in your heart and let it be applied to your life every day all throughout this week. Now, in just a few moments, we'll be back with today's local service. So just go ahead and take a quick break, grab what you need, and we'll be right back in just a few moments. But let me go ahead and pray out this portion of our service on today. Now unto him who was able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the Almighty God. To him be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. Father, we thank you for your grace in every area of our lives. It is more than enough. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, guys, we love you so much. We'll be right back. <laughs>